<laughs> a description is given about somebody, something, maybe the Messiah. It says, and he shall be called, I'm quoting, called Emmanuel, which means God with us. He shall be called Emmanuel. Now I'm asking people, I said, look, you've got 27 books in the New Testament, 27 books. In any one of these books, is it ever mentioned anywhere that Jesus was ever called Emmanuel? Was he called Emmanuel? He was called Jesus. He was called the Messiah. He was called the bread of life. He was called this, <laughs> the truth of God. All that, the word of God. Was he ever called Emmanuel in any one of these 27 books? Was he? No. So, it means he's not referring to him. He shall be called. Like you see, the man comes along, he's going to lecture to you people on the subject, uh, two pictures of Jesus, Quranic and Biblical, and that man shall be called the Messiah. Now, did anybody call me Messiah? No. So it's, there's no fulfillment. Can you see? If I wasn't called Messiah, I'm not the Messiah. He was called, and he, nobody ever called him. He shall be called. I said, you see, that refers to Muhammad. Because Muhammad, you see in the Quran, in the Holy Quran you read, that Muhammad and Abu Bakr at the flight, they were in a cave and they were almost being caught out. And Abu Bakr says, he says, look man, they are almost, they are upon us. We are done for. And Muhammad says, Inna Allah ma'ana, Emmanuel. Inna Allah, God is with us, Emmanuel. Muhammad said that, not Jesus. Jesus on the cross, he said, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. You see, at the critical moment, when you have God with you, who says that? Muhammad says that. Inna Allah ma'ana, which is the exact translation of Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus says, according to your record, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? God is not with him. He's forsaken by God. That's at the critical moment. So this is not referring, nowhere referring to Jesus. With regards to Jesus saying, I am the way, the truth and the life, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Mr. D, that, what have you to say to that? I said, I have to respond. He did say that. I am the way. He is the way. You see, in the context, now let's have a look at it in the context. You see, the disciples of Jesus misunderstood everything. Everything he spoke, they misunderstood. And his present day disciples and followers misinterpret everything he uttered with apologies. You see, this is in John chapter 14. At the beginning, we are told, Jesus says, In my father's house there are many mansions. Had it not been for so, uh, so I would have told you. And I'm going to prepare a place for you. And whither I go, ye know. And the way, ye know. You know where I'm going, and you know how to get there. In other words, I assume you understand what I'm talking about. He's telling his disciples, Do you know where I'm going and you know how to reach that destination? So they say, Lord, we know not whither thou goest and how can we know the way? In other words, they misunderstood. Jesus is talking about spiritual matters, spiritual goals, spiritual destination. They are thinking of geographical locations, Washington, Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, what? They think, it's a look, we don't know where you are going and how are we going to get there? Look, misunderstanding. He's talking about spiritual things, they're thinking of geographical, geographical places. So Jesus in answer to that says, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. It means if you want to know where I'm going, look at me. The way to God is personified in me. Look at me. The truth of God is personified in me. Look at me. True life is personified in me. Look at me. If you follow me, you will reach your destination. And they misunderstood again. No, it was too heavy for them. Too heavy for them, for his disciples. The simple statements, they can't understand. Everything they're misunderstanding. So they said, look, Lord, show us the Father and it suffice at us. Look, all this you're talking about is too heavy for us. Too heavy. We don't know what you're talking about. Just show us God. If you can see God, we'll be satisfied. In answer to that, Jesus says, Philip, you have been with me for so long. You know, you ought to know better than that. You are a Jew. 
And as a Jew, you know, no man can see God and live. God is not seen at any time. That's what the scriptures say. He's not seen at any time. And no man can see God and live. If you see God, you'll be consumed. And you with me for so long? And you're still asking such a silly, making such a silly request? You want to see God with your bodily eyes when you can't look at the sun? He said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Meaning, if you understood what I am, you would have understood what God is. Same John is talking other places, seeing they see not, hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. Means you see and you don't see. If you have seen me, meaning not physical seeing, because Philip had no defect in his eyes. If he had, Jesus would have healed him. If he can heal other people from the blindness, why not his disciple of his def defect in sight? No, he's not talking about physical sight. Means if you have seen me, he had that has seen me, when if you understood what I am, you would have understood what God is. You wouldn't, you wouldn't make such a silly request, wanting to see God with your bodily eyes. Way to God, you see, the, every prophet of God, in his own time, in his own dispensation, is the only way to God. In the time of Moses, Moses was the way to God. If you wanted another way, the children of Israel chose another way, through the golden calf, for which 24,000 people were killed. The Jews, killing Jews. God's command says, destroy them. This rubbish, you know, they're worshipping a calf, kill them. One book says 23,000, other says 24,000. We kill for that. Why? Because they chose another way. There's only one way to God, is through the way of the prophet of God. The prophet of the time, he tells you, in the time of Noah, Noah was the way to God. You want to be saved? Get into the ark. That's all. No fasting, no prayer, no zakat, no pilgrimage, nothing. Just get into the ark. Salvation is yours. That's all. You see, he's the way to God. Anybody who got in, saved. From physical destruction as well as spiritual destruction. Listening, hearken to the prophet of God. In the time of Jonah, Jonah was the way. In the time of Jesus, Jesus was the way. In the time of Muhammad, this is his dispensation. Muhammad is the way. If you want another way, it will not be accepted from you. Because Christ told you that when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. He had the message, he had the solutions, but now he didn't have the time. The poor man is on the run. As soon as he opened his mouth, the Jews were after his blood. And a man on the run, he's got no time to give you all the teaching. So he said, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. How be it, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. He said, that spirit of truth is Muhammad. And we are prepared to reason with you. Let us have a dialogue. I have written a book called What the Bible Says About Muhammad. This deals with prophecies from the Old Testament. I have delivered a lecture on Muhammad, the natural successor to Christ. It's available on videotape. I haven't had a chance to write the book yet. But inshallah, God willing, I'll write the book. You see? So in other words, now let us have a dialogue. Who is the spirit of truth? Who is the comforter? And what does this mean when he says, I'm the way, the truth and the life. He is the way to God. He is not the goal. To the Christian, he is the goal, he is not the way. He said that we must talk and reason how I see it, how you see it. And by that we might arrive at truth. What truth is, really is. However, the next question. Huh? I've been so fascinated with everything you've been saying. I'd love to sit down and talk to you, but I feel that this is the closest opportunity I'll get to do that. So um, I had to narrow my many questions down to this one. Um, does does God, according to the Islam faith, provide forgiveness for sins? And if so, how do we know that? What is, what is God's promise to us that... How does He provide that promise? I'll answer that. And, okay. I'll answer that. When you say, and, you see now, this is an old machine. Old machine. So when I'm answering one, I forget the other. And then you might think that I try to hoodwink the people and you. So hmm. therefore, if you ask one question at a time, you'll be more merciful to me. <laughs> Then you take a chance, another one, and another one, I don't mind. Till 12 o'clock tonight, I'm at your disposal. Okay. But if you can, just one at a time, so it makes it easy for me. Please. Okay. Right. Okay. Do, does God, according to the Islam faith, provide forgiveness for sins? Yes. That forgiveness of sin is, you sincerely repent of the wrongs that you have done. God forgives. He does not need blood, the blood of animals, or of mankind, no blood. He says in the Holy Bible, he says in the book of Isaiah, he said, I forgive sins for my own sake and I will not remember your sins. 
What he wants from you is come to him, sincerely make an effort and forgive. And the parable in the Bible, the prodigal son, if you remember, prodigal son in the Gospel of St. Luke, prodigal son. Father, a father had two sons. Who is the father in this parable? God. He is the father. He's got two sons. Means two types of his creation. One was who remains with the father. You know, prays, does everything, nice, good chap, goody, goody, good fellow. The other fellow, like most of us, he says, look, dad, give me my inheritance, what belongs to me, my talents, all the talents, give it to me, and I will make into the world and fend for myself. And the loving father he said, all right, I know it's not good for you, but since you asked for it, have it, there, take it. And the son took it, which we all take. See, the talents. He's given us a lot of talents. And he went out into the world as the God.